Well, how exciting is this? You know her. She is currently a Fox Sports TV host, a reporter. You see her on NASCAR, the NFL, college football, college basketball. The list goes on. She is also known as Shannon Spokes in that movie, Cars 3. Yes, it is Shannon Spake, and I am so excited to have her. I'm Fox Sports Radio anchor Brian Fenley. I'm on Twitter at Brian Fenley, and Shannon is a must-follow on social media, Twitter, and Instagram. She is at Shannon Spake. Shannon, thanks so much for doing this. Of course. I appreciate you asking me. I'm excited to catch up. Yeah, it's been a couple years. Certainly admire everything you have done. And one of the things that I noticed following you on social media, Shannon, is you really get a lot of enjoyment from cataloging your stair climbing at football stadiums. Yeah. And so as you get ready to cover games again in the NFL, and I look forward to asking you about all that, what's one set of steps in a football stadium you are longing to scale that you have not done yet? Well, I think it would be really cool to do out in um, New England. I think it'd be awesome. I think it'd also be really cool to do Green Bay. I've been to Chicago. Um, unfortunately, the security's pretty tough there at, at really? Soldier Field. So when I've been there on a Saturday, I wasn't able to kind of do the whole stairs. I think I ran like one, one yeah. flight of stairs and that was it. So I think those are the ones I think just like the more historic ones I think would be really cool. I did so many, about 35 different stadium stairs uh, since I started doing them. A uh, Beaver Stadium at Penn State is hands down my favorite. I have told the story before. It was uh, a Friday morning, about 7.30 in the morning. It was 30 degrees outside, but I was like, I am, I'm definitely running these stairs. And I was the only human being in the entire, I mean, in the entire wow. state. I was the only person there. And it was just one of those moments where I went to the highest point that I could get to and kind of looked around and took it all in. And it was incredible. I, I ran LSU's stadiums during basketball season. So like okay. the, the field wasn't painted. And again, I was the only one out there uh, the running the stairs. So those are cool kind of moments for me. And it gives me a different perspective about these places that I go and, and where we watch these games surreal moments yeah. for sure and speaking of those games speaking of all the assignments you have had Shannon what's the one that brings you the most goosebumps uh well the final four when Chris Jenkins hit that buzzer beater um I was sitting right behind the North Carolina bench okay and I had covered North Carolina I had covered that team for a really long time and um and it was wild because I was getting up. I thought we were going to go, that it was going to go into overtime. And all of a sudden you hear like, Bing! and then like the streamers come out. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't see the shot because it was on the other side of the court. And you're like, what just happened? <laughs> and so then you go back and watch it. So that was, that was a really cool, um, that was a really cool event. You know, I, I like, it's funny because like, I'll go back, there'll be a moment from a football game that someone will start talking about. And I'm like, I, I worked that game. Yeah. Or like, like uh, Jadavion Clowney with the hit against. Oh, Michigan. wow. I worked yeah. that game. You know, or like I got to do the Giants last game this season. So I essentially did wow. Eli Manning's last game, That's you know, really even cool. though he wasn't on the field. So I, I don't know. There are just all these little special moments that kind of pop up that I think are um, it just it's just been so such a blessing to have such a career in this industry. One of the things I admire about you as well, Shannon, is your your tenacity and just your intensity, but just your ability to deliver incredible interviews and capture the moment. One in which that I wanted to bring up is the one you just did recently with Ryan Newman. Mm -hmm. And that was aired on Fox Sports TV. And certainly you shared it on social media. And I encourage everybody to check out all of your NASCAR coverage online, digitally, and also your one up, one down digital short series with Fox Sports Radio, or excuse me, Fox Sports TV. You do come on Fox Sports Radio, which is a blast. But the tear jerking interview that you did with Ryan, take us through how you mentally prepared for that because obviously he experienced a horrifying crash at Daytona and with that came a lot of emotions through that. Yeah, and I that interview really surprised me too because I've known Ryan for a really long time. I know Ryan can be, he jokes around, he can be sarcastic, he can kind of downplay um, emotional things like yeah. like hey listen he's an engineer right and and that's one thing that I talked to him about my husband's an engineer and they they they're the the emotions they don't really kind of think emotionally driven yeah. they're a lot more numerical and data-based and and so I actually had some conversations with my husband about the interview with Ryan and kind of wow. said hey what what are some things that you think 
I should like specific questions that I should ask him that that could help get into his mind. Yeah. Again, I've known Ryan for a really long time. So uh, my producer, Kelly Hamilton, and I had a conversation the day before. We kind of knew the direction that we wanted to go with the interview. And um, I, we just basically said, like, we're not going to let him off the hook. You know, we know that yeah. this is not just another race. We know that this was a big event. And so for me, I wrote in the Instagram post, Brian, that I started the interview by saying, hey, Ryan, listen, I, I, I know that you have answered all these questions. I know that you have talked to people. I've watched those interviews, but I've never been able to talk to you about this. And the reason that means so much to me is because that night I was on air. That night I had to be prepared with questions to talk about Ryan Newman as if he had passed yeah. away. We didn't know what was going to happen that night. We didn't know what we were going to throw to Steve O'Donnell at, at the Daytona Media Center. Uh, we saw camera angles of them trying to take him out of the car once we had gone off air that obviously the public didn't see. Yeah. I came home that night and sat on my, my kitchen table till three o'clock in the morning, staring at the wall, at checking Twitter every hour. Wow. So it was a really tough night for me, both professionally and personally. And I started the interview by telling him that and telling him that it, it was a full circle event for me to have this conversation with him. And that's really what I felt like it was. I didn't feel like it was me interviewing him. I really felt like it was two people who were connected to that night, one who remembers it, one who doesn't, who has all of these sort of emotional attachments based from people who talk to him about it, but he doesn't remember the night yeah. and uh, someone that I've known for a very long time. So I, I, it was a really special one for me just because of how connected I felt to that event and, and to Ryan, obviously knowing him all these years. Ryan speaking about the ability to be there for his kids, you know, having children and being so grateful to, to be around with them after such an experience. And then you connect because you've got children yourself on a much lighter note, Shannon, what was the biggest thrill about voicing Shannon spokes in cars three and how you prepared for that assignment? Well, it was definitely the kids. My kids were in first grade <laughs> at the time. And <laughs> Sort of like they don't they don't care that I do Duke Carolina games. They could care less that I bring them to Rupp Arena. <laughs> they could care less about any of that stuff. And then when I when I was Shannon Spokes, they were just like so proud. They were like, my mommy's in Cars Three. They'd say it at the grocery store, at the library. Yeah. Like, all right, kid, right on. And, and I'd be like, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, yeah, that was. I mean, that that was the coolest. Is just kind of them thinking it was cool and having my little die cast. Uh, I was watching them play with my die cast and Richard Petty's die cast one time, and they're like pushing them down like in the living room, and they're like, "Mommy, you beat the king!" And I was like, "This is <laughs> so weird," you know. So it was that was the best part. It's just the 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 cool mommy points that I got. Janet Spake is with us, a superstar with Fox Sports Television. I'm Brian Fenley with Fox Sports Radio. And as you gloss over your career, Shannon, what was the defining moment when you were most frustrated with how your career was progressing? And then how did you break through? Oh, so I remember when I first made the move from like full-time NASCAR to basketball okay. and I had been in the NASCAR garage for four or five years. And when you're in the NASCAR garage, you don't really, you're not able to kind of really kind of stay connected to other mm -hmm. sports because you are so consumed with this sport that you're covering. Sure. The races are on all day Saturday, they're on all day Sunday. So when I first started doing basketball games and I would have to interview John Calipari or I, you know, in Rupp Arena and I was the new girl and, and uh, now the Big Blue Nation, I mean, I, I'm, like a, I'm like one of theirs, you know? Yeah, yeah. I feel very connected to them. But you know, your, your feedback that I was getting I mean, it wasn't great at first because I was still trying to learn and still trying to progress in that, in that direction. And there were many nights that I went back and said, like, am I even doing the right thing? Am I in the right industry? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Should I be doing something else? And that can be really frustrating because I think in any industry, confidence is the biggest thing. If you, if you are confident and, and love what you do, then, I mean, you're going to, I think you're going to continue to move forward. So there were a lot of frustrating nights and there still are, even in this, even at this stage of my career where you come home from a day at work and maybe an interview didn't go the way that you wanted it to, or, you know, you just, you just didn't feel like you were connected to the game. Uh, you messed up, you forgot something, you forgot someone's name, you mispronounced someone's name. Um, all those things I think can add to that frustration. So there, there's always, I mean, there's always moments where you're trying to kind of, um, 
get better and, yeah. and deal with deal with frustration and deal with disappointment in, in just uh, some of the some of the things that you do. But as you continue to experience those, you continue to grow. And like you said, there's always room for improvement, no matter where somebody is and where they are with their career. When you started your career, Shannon, to where you are now, how do you feel like the perception of women in the industry has changed? Um, so, I mean, I think that we have a lot more high profile positions now from Carissa to Sam Ponder, uh, to Laura Rutledge, to Maria Taylor. I mean, there's, there's women hosting these, these mainstream sports sure. pre pre game shows and pre race shows. And even with, you know, with, with Caitlin Vinci and myself doing the pre race shows on Fox, I think that those a lot of times were those men had those positions. Sure. And I do feel like there's a lot more high profile positions with women in those positions. And um, that's, that's always great to see. I mean, I you just, you look across every network and, and there's a woman in a high profile role. And, and um, I, I know that that's changed in the last 20 years. When I first started in an industry, I mean, you had Hannah and, and Susie Colber and Michelle Tafoya, and certainly they were doing some of that uh, but I feel like it's a lot more prevalent now. Now you are balancing being a mother and mm -hmm. doing your job and also working out at a high level with your, right there now. Is a, you, got a, you got a whole lot, but you are a multitasking maven, Shannon Spake. Follow her on Twitter at Shannon Spake. I'm on Twitter at Brian Fenley and you are a mom and you have two twin sons and you try to get to some of their sporting events when you can, when your schedule allows. What's the happiest moment you have felt witnessing one of their sporting events? Oh, that's tough. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's really tough. So they just started swimming again. Okay. Uh, I remember, I think it was two summers ago, my son, we were doing like the local uh, club swim team during the mm -hmm. summer. And he got put in a, a relay with some high school kids and he was nine wow. and he was so excited and so nervous. And he, he moved down the end of that pool, did a little flip turn and came back and, and he, uh, he was whooped when he got back. But I remember being like, thinking that that was really cool. Um, any, I mean, anything, I mean, yeah. I, you know, my kids could, you know, I mean, when they use the bathroom, I'm proud, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yes. You know, true it's, love. Uh, there's anything, it's anything. It's, yeah. um, there's a, uh, the, there's a whole new pride level when you have when you have kids and and kind of see them succeed in, in anything that they do. How far along, Shannon, are they to joining you on one of your high intensity workouts, preparing for the marathons and and an Ironman? <laughs> I bring them to the pool with me once a week, so okay. I do swim once a week with like a masters, aka older people group. And so the the coach that trains us she has an empty lane. And so she'll have one of my sons swim for a half hour and another one of my sons swim for a half hour. So they do join me in that. And I love having them at the finish line. And I love see them seeing me kind of do what I do. I do think it's, um, it'll eventually kind of rub off on them and, and they'll get in. Um, you know, they'll, they'll just realize, I think the importance of hard work and, and see what mommy does. Uh, I, I, we've done a couple five K's together. I have okay. one son who's all into it. And the other son who's feet hurt after 500 feet so <laughs> you know, just go with your dad you and I are gonna go so yeah <laughs> you've crossed many a finish line you're about to take the starting line for the NFL season and be a part of the broadcast team there saw Shannon you're going to be teaming up with Kenny Albert and Jonathan Vilman or Vilma I should say this Fox NFL package that you're going to be a part of, how excited are you with the components that you're going to be with on the broadcast level? I mean, you know, Brian, I mean, we, we as reporters and in sports, like we like to be part of really cool and unique events yeah. and stories. And I don't really think that there's anything more cool and unique than what's going on in the sporting world right now. When NASCAR came back after the break because of the pandemic for us to go live on air and be the sort of the first sport that yeah. came back, live sport that came back uh, to be part of that was pretty cool. And then to be part of this NFL season, as unique as it's going to be and as crazy as it's going to be, the fact that we're doing it is 
all that matters. I, I told my bosses, like, I'm like, I don't even care if I have to do reports from the, the toilet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I have to be in the bathroom doing it. I'll do it just to be just like, just to be back and, and covering this. And listen, we're all doing it together. We're all in the same boat. Sure. We all just have to be patient and kind of move through this together. But I think the most important thing is uh, the, the players have been so great and so responsible, you know, with the testing that's yes. come out. I just think it's a testament to how much they care, not about themselves, but the other people that are on the field with them. Cause there's so many times that we've heard that. So it'll be very different. Our roles will look different. We'll have to, you know, find different ways to be creative, but I also think it's going to be so cool to kind of be part of this and moving with the NFL as they, as they try to navigate this. Using your creative juices. What do you think that's going to look like visually from you getting interviews and capturing storylines how do you feel like fox is going to integrate you in a broadcast that might be a little different than yours past you know i don't know so i mean we're, we're being told that there'll be certain parts of the stadium that we can be in uh you know i i, I we may have better better vantage point than we did oh. sort of behind the, the 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 benches there's not going to be fans in the stand i don't know what level of of audio they may or may not be pumping into the stand so we might actually hear some of the coaches a little bit better the atmosphere will be very unique and and uh and when we moved into the studio for race hub and we were no longer at the racetrack mm -hmm. that was something that i felt like really you had to yeah like it wasn't like preparing for it but you had to be aware that you didn't get to drive through the infield and see all the fans and feel all that sort of energy yeah. We had to kind of remember what it felt like and make sure that we brought that level. And I think that's something that we will have to adjust to because certainly when you're down there and the fans are going crazy and, you know, the, the 12th man or, you know, or yeah. I'm, you know, the Vikings and they're doing, you know, the, the skull chant and, and all of that stuff, that stuff adds to the atmosphere of these games. And so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. What was it? as far as meeting Clay Travis, I know you go on his show weekly on Fox sports radio. What was most interesting? when you met him the first time? So I actually started listening to Clay probably about two and a half years ago. Okay. And, it was, uh, I, and um, I, I like posted a pic, a video of me in an Outkick shirt and he knew that I was a fan cause like I had, I had tweeted him or something like that. So this was like, I mean, he's blown up in the last, sure. last couple of years. And so I think I was on like once or twice. And then when we were down at the Super Bowl. I was kind of like, you know, Clay, you don't have any women come on your show. <laughs> yes. And uh, he was like, yeah, we got to change that. So then, <laughs> so then that, now I'm, I mean, I have a blast with him. I just think he's so cool. So I have a, one of my kids is here. <laughs> That's Brady. Brady, what's going on? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> got a Brady, shirt on. The, uh, the you. The t-shirt from this year, we get this every single year. My dad lives in Indiana and he sends us the, the Notre Dame shirt every year. <laughs> I just heard some, I heard some good news about Notre Dame football today that they're going to allow 20% of right. the capacity to be filled with fans. So, hey, we'll take it. <laughs> have you been there before? Have you been to Notre I, Dame Stadium? I have not. I actually had a friend from high school that was a fencer for Notre Dame of uh -huh. all sports. But what is it like out there? What's the majesty uh -huh. of it? We actually went as fans. So because NBC covers mostly all the Notre Dame. So I've never been yeah. on the side. It's literally, to me, it was like stepping back in time. Like the night before we went, my dad lives in Indiana. He lives about 45 minutes uh, from South Bend. And I've done basketball games at Notre Dame before. But uh, we watched Rudy the night before because the kids Aww. were coming with us. So we watched Rudy the night before and, and uh, Mike Bray, who's who I've become friends with yeah. covering uh, basketball. We went to his office and, and we, we my dad got to meet him and, wow. and my stepmother. And so and uh, and then we went to the game. It, it literally is. I mean, they they play the old songs when they run out. It feels it just feels like you're stepping back in time. The PA like it just sounds everything about it sounds really cool and authentic and, and very, very much like you're sitting in Rudy. <laughs> now, I saw this post, Shannon. Does your grandfather also live in Indiana? Yes. So how could you not idolize what your grandfather has done? And just for, for folks who don't know, you pointed this out on Clay Travis's show, but you posted a picture of him now, 95 years old, a World War II veteran, and that signature picture of him where he is staining his deck. And you had the caption that read, Hard work is ageless. Crazy. Shannon, what's a story about his life that moves you the most? Everything. 
the fact that, um, you know, he went to war when he was 18 years old, he was a paratrooper, jumped out of airplanes, saw horrific stuff. I mean, when I remember there, I mean, there hasn't been a time in my life where I haven't been aware of the nightmares that he has still to this day because of, you know, the things that he saw and over there, he was part of, um, uh, it was called the battle of lady, which is one of the biggest, I mean, there was, it was a huge battle, um, there you could read about it there was there was a lot of death and he's every single second of his life he's had a smile on his face you know i mean you you, you think about my grandparents they they lost uh they lost a child um my grandmother battled depression and and other illnesses he was in war uh, my grandmother passed away in 2001 and he just is so beautiful and resilient and happy and uh and never complains and so yeah i just i think that that is um he's a huge great example of, of of the type of person that i would love to be and um and certainly I, I just think he's he's an incredible human being it's obvious it's evident shannon that he has had a transcendent effect on you i can see it beaming from you shannon spake thank you so much for doing this catch her on fox sports tv nascar nfl college football college basketball check out her digital shorts follow her on twitter and insta at shannon spake i'm brian fenley shannon thanks so much for doing this i appreciate it it was really good to catch up with you